This is a review for Dragon's Race to the Edge, Episode 3, Imperfect Harmony. Uh, okay, enough joking around here. Um, the reason that you're just hearing our voices and not seeing us is because both of our computers are... What would you say? Bull pucky. Yes, dead, so... This is how we'll be doing these for a while yet. We might try to do a video on a different day. Yeah. Because we could use my phone for video. Yeah. But for right now, it's just voice. Yay! But anyway, episode three, Imperfect Harmony. Well, this is an interesting episode. Yeah, to say the least. It had action, comedy, a new dragon. All, all, all in all, a pretty good episode. Everything seemed to tie in at the end. No loose, no loose threads that need to be tied up. Because yeah, it tied up the other loose ends. <laughs> yeah. And it leaves the door open, obviously, for the next episode. Pretty basic. Yeah, standard. Dragon's episode. Not bad. Um, the basic summary is that the writers are trying to find their own... Well, they're... They're exploring the great unknown. Yes. With their catchphrase, INTO THE GREAT BEYOND! Yeah. So they're flying beyond all uncharted anythings for themselves. Yes, and amongst their travels, we... They come to a beautiful island, I would say. Yep, it's got volcanic activity, that's for sure, by the rock formations and the fact that it's well described as an oasis. Yeah. And on this island, there is a strange sound that is heard. As they all go to bed for their first night on this new island, we get a cute little moment between Astrid and Hiccup on the beach. With a really big moon that shouldn't have been that big, but you know. Cartoon. We've got to make it look romantic. Yes, it was very romantic. And then when they wake up in the morning, all the dragons are gone. Dun, dun, dun. So, this is where the conflict of the episode starts off. The dragons are missing, and one of them actually returns. Take a guess which one it is. Toothless, as always. <laughs> yes. And we get a beautiful comedy in this sequence. Mm -hmm. First, we have Toothless showing up and grabbing Hiccup by the leg. And dragging off just the leg. It, it looked like Hiccup got dragged. And yeah. it, it's a close-up of Toothless's face. With the foot in his mouth, and that's all you see. And it's he's got some serious conviction while he's running, and then... Astrid says, How long do you think he'll get before he realizes? Hiccup sits up in the frame. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hard to say. He seemed pretty committed. <laughs> yeah. And then, I love the enthusiasm bug comes later. Yeah. When he returns after he realizes, Oh, I only have the foot because it's not attached! <laughs> and this... So, then Hiccup and Toothless start to fly off to look for the dragons from the air. And then we see, uh, random Thunder Drum. Yeah. So, Thunder Drum attacks the gang that's on foot. And they are deafened by said Thunder Drum. Temporarily deafened. It does go away within the next scene cut. It does, yeah. But wait, we got some great comedy from that. I'll, I'll put in a clip here. Which, although quite enjoyable, is not very stealthy. Oh god, the twins are a riot. <laughs> Which Hiccup always forgetting that they can't hear. What? Generic thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so this So as they're looking for their dragons, they come across a big pile of bones. Mm-hmm. Very scary pile of bones. Yes, and this is where we 
where the episode starts to get dark, and that's what I like about this episode. And as the episode continues, they find the bunch of dragons encased in amber. Nice globs of amber. It's beautiful and shiny and clear. But scary. Yes, and they find their dragons, and everyone's wondering, oh crap, what's doing this? What's caging, what's capturing dragons and eating them? Turns out, a new dragon, big shocker, the Death Song. It's got the wings of a butterfly and the song of a siren and the frills of a frilling lizard. Yes, you can tell this took obvious inspiration from Jurassic Park. Yeah. Except it doesn't spit acid or shoot blood out of its eyes. Yeah. It just shoots... Globs of amber. A crystalline... It would, it would, it wouldn't necessarily be amber because amber is sap and yes, trees I know. create sap. So it would be more like a crystalline, it, it would be the spit that crystallizes and there's some science behind it that I don't have. <laughs> but yeah, and the animation of the amber that flew was, and connected was, with yeah, Target, that was That brilliant. was really well done. And the way it splattered and then you saw the steam rising because Obviously, dragons produce heat, and it would have to be warm to shoot this stuff. And then it hardens once it cools. It's kind of like adamantium. Once it's cool, it's almost indestructible. So the dragon has to keep it molten hot. But... And as the episode progresses, Hiccup is the only one to escape. Because Astrid pushed him out of the way out of one of the... Sacrificing self! Yes. For the sake of the loved one! Cliché! Okay, okay. Relax. It's always the woman who is self-sacrificing. But it, it, it's Astrid. It's gotta be badass. There wasn't an axe involved. There was nothing badass about it. Okay, fine. But... And Hiccup is chased away because there's not much else he can do at this point. And he meets the thunder drum again. And makes friends, what do you know? After some, quote-unquote, bonding, as Stoic would call it. Which is pretty basic. Here, I'm going to look away and put my hand to your nose, because I do that with all the dragons. Are, are, are dragons face shy? It's actually a way to... It's averting dominance. Yes. To not make eye contact is to avert dominance. So that the dragon knows you are not a threat. Yes, and... Okay. But, I mean, it, it get... At some point, it's starting to get a, a little repetitive. Yeah. It's the usual rigor morale of... Let's get stuck in something! And then, guess who saves us? Hiccup and Toothless! Huzzah! <sighs> and then they work with the Thunder Drum to... Trap the death song in a cave. Yeah. So this is. Well, I mean, he did say that they it does he doesn't know how long it will stay in that cave because it's a very strong dragon. It can probably break itself out. Yeah. It, I mean, it broke through stalactites and stalagmites with ease, so. It, it's gonna break out of there eventually. I mean, it's got that hook on its muzzle, so obviously that's for bludgeoning. Probably prying, too. Yeah. It would be a good thing to pry with. Just kind of like stag antlers. Just yeah. reach and grab, lift. And let's go into this. How does Hiccup free his friends and the dragons from the amber stuff? Well, he realizes he needs heat. So he gets the plot hole monstrous nightmare gel. Where did it come from? We don't know. What we do know is from earlier that Snotlout always carries it. He never leaves home without it. However, Snotlout and Hookfang are trapped in amber. So where did Hiccup get it? We don't know. There was a break between scenes. He went out and milked the monster's nightmare off screen. Even though it was trapped <laughs> in amber. There, there, there's no yeah, way he yeah, could have actually it. had it. Or, or... 
What I would have done would have been like, hey, Hook Fang, burst into flames. Yeah, what, what do you know? He's free. That, that's Hello? where I was going. That would have worked really well. Yes, that's where I was going. I'm like, okay, this. Now, there are a few minor problems with this episode. But this is a good episode. This is one of my favorite episodes from the first season. There's, a, there's actually only a couple that I think outrank it in this first season. But as a whole, it's a fairly basic episode. It has a standard three-part structure. Yep. Uh, the introduction. Oh. Quest. Quest. Standard quest. Uh, a yep. conflict and simple resolution. You gotta fit it into a, what, 22-minute episode or something? Yep. However, we do have a returning voice from a beloved doctor. <laughs> David Tennant reprises his role as Spite Lout Jorgensen, Snot Lout's dad. And he's probably the only parent with the original voice because they couldn't get... What's his face for Stark? God, I think his name is Chris. Gerald Butler. Gerald Butler. Right? Yeah. 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 I think the current guy's Chris. I don't know. I'm really bad at remembering names. Yes. I'm better with faces. Mm hmm. But the, it, it's great to see David Tennant back as Spite Loud. Yep. He only... It's hard to tell it's him, though, when he does a Scottish accent impression. Mm hmm. It's only on certain words that you can register it's him. Yes. Although. It's great to see him back after yeah. so... When was the last time we saw him? The last time Spike Lout was in an episode, which yeah. would have been the last season. Yeah, one of the episodes in season two. Oh man, it's been so long yeah. since we've done that. Yeah. But it's great to see him back. And in a better role. He's less of a... Dick. Yeah. He's more of a caring father, like you'd expect, and less of a... I'll bludgeon you. Yeah. And he honestly cares about the safety of the village. And he's talking about peace! What do you know? The warmonger is talking about peace! Yes. So, quite a bit has changed in the past three years. And this is only on the third episode of this season. Whoa. Some serious thunder out there. Yeah, but this is a decent episode. I do enjoy it. It has some nice comedy, some action, a beautifully designed dragon. Oh yeah, that was a well done dragon. The, the wings, enough, were... The colors! Brightly and... colored to let you know it's dangerous, makes a calling sound that's not stock. No. They didn't have, like, the previous episode had Toothless's uh, sonic lo echolocation thing. The, uh, what is that other dra the snow dragon one? Snow Wraith. Yeah, the Snow Wraith registered it, and it sounded like dolphins. It was dolphin callings, if you pay attention to that. Yeah. That was kind of, and the Snow Wraith itself had a couple roars that were just... Mediocre stock. stock. So, this episode, Imperfect Harmony, is a much better episode than the last one. Yeah. Well, except the last one was made by Gothi. Yeah. She was the only selling point. Pretty much, yeah. The dragon was pretty cool, except I noticed that its fangs are flat topped, mm -hmm. which would not function. Yeah. And it's, the hook on its snap was also flat-topped, which would be good for ramming, which would be good for snow, but flat-topped teeth would not work in that, no. They're either a predator or a herbivore. Flat-topped teeth connotate herbivore, but it's a dragon, which means it's a predator, so it should have actual fangs. But th that's neither here nor there, that's in the previous episode. Yeah. But this is probably one of my favorite episodes, be just simply for the dragon. Yeah. Um, very, very lizard-like. Yeah. 
Which is something we haven't really seen. Beyond the uh, terrible terrors, no. Yeah, and a bit of with Monsters Nightmare, but... And, and the uh, f uh, fireworms. Yes. They're very lizard-like. Lizard-like and centipede. Yeah, like a combination of lizard and centipede. Eerily creepy. Which but, is the point. Yeah, but the... The death song is very different. It has a beautiful design, so many colors. Whoever designed this dragon and created it, they deserve a, a raise. Yeah, they very much looked at butterflies for those wings, because it, it had the uh, oculus pattern. Yes. And overall, it's just nice to see that sort of creativity. Yeah. I mean, the first movie prided itself on having so many different types of different dragons. Mm -hmm. And putting so much thought, love, and care into each of their design. It's great to see that, them taking that up again. But overall, this I have to give this, um, this episode 4 out of 5 stars. Yeah. A few things that could, that could be improved on, but it doesn't really subtract from how good no. of an episode it is. Especially with the, the uh, amber projectile. That is... That's beautiful animation. Yeah. And, and that's a well thought out dragon design, too. Because we, we haven't seen too many trapping dragons, but they would have to exist. Yeah. And it, it fits along the insect like quality of this dragon. Yeah. Because that, that's a thing a lot of insects do with the sticky. And frogs do it, too. Frogs and toads, they have uh, sticky projectiles that they'll yeah. vomit. At their prey. Mm -hmm. And this, and when you f first realize what this dragon does before you even see it, you're just like, "Fuck! It eats dragons." <laughs> Which I mean, we've what, seen that before. Yeah, it would have uh, the really big guy. Yeah, the Red Death. We we've, yeah. we've seen that before, but it's just so infrequent that whenever you do see it, you're like, "Shit." We're in some deep shit now, man. Yeah, it, it doesn't just eat them whole like the Red Death does. No, it, it traps them, traps them, drags them off, and actually physically rips them apart like a, like any other predator would. Yeah. So these dragons would die excruciating deaths that they can't fight against. That's creatively dark. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. No, it's I, actually very realistic. It is, and that's good. It's an actual predator. Yes, this thing, this thing draws in dragons with its. It's a siren. Mm -hmm, it is a siren. It draws in dragons with its call, then it proceeds to trap them like a spider mm -hmm. and save them for later. Yep. It cocoons them. Yes. In its crystalline spit. Molten it, crystalline spit. Yes, it, it, that's what. This is such a. We're just praising the dragon on this. The, it's the, a good dragon! The dragon is the selling point of the episode. Yeah, the rest of the episode's just generic basic episode building, but the dragon that's is the, a pretty freaking cool dragon! That's the selling point on this whole thing. I mean, aside f with the dragon, in it, it's just a standard episode from season one. But with the dragon in it, it's so yeah. good! Could you imagine if they had tamed that dragon? You know how easy it would be to capture Dagger? Blah. Done! <laughs> oh look, he's in prison and never going anywhere ever again! <gasps> Problem solved. Okay, that's it. Um, a series over, let's get to work on, you know, the movie now. Yeah. But no, this, this is such a good dragon. I, I love the creativity. I, this is the, that's the, it's the selling point. The design and such is the selling point on the whole thing. In the previous episode, Gothi was the selling point, yeah. which, while an interesting choice, doesn't seem to have as much impact as the dragon. No. And they really beefed out their creativity with this thing. Yep. So, like I said, a good rating for this episode. Awesome dragon. Great comedy. Oh my gosh, the comedy. Two bodies, half a brain. <laughs> yep. But overall, this is a great 
episode. I highly recommend it. And we are... I'm not sure when we're going to get to the next one. Ugh. <laughs> but we will get to it at some point. Probably not until next summer when I'm not in college. <laughs> yeah, probably. Although you might still be working full time, so that might be also a... Yeah, but overall, it we will we will get to it at some point. We just thought we'd do a little thing just to let you know that we are still thinking about this series. And we're still alive! Yes! We haven't died or given up on you! No, well, well I haven't died because you see me on YouTube, but <laughs> I haven't said much about you. <laughs> no, I'm still alive. I'm just figuratively dying. Yeah, she's very busy. She's a, she's a busy woman. But oh, we do appreciate all your concern on this series and wanting to see more from us. And I just, I can't wait to do more. But thank you all so much for watching, or I, I guess listening in this case. <laughs> Thanks for being loyal. <laughs> yes, and we will see you all next time. Uh, I see you around, I guess. <laughs> yeah.